This is what a nightmare looks like. Mike Tyson's nightmare. It was the richest fight in boxing history. Mike Tyson wasn't ready. Lennox Lewis was. It was the night Mike Tyson hit rock bottom in the ring. from here, Mike? I don't know, man. I might just fade into Bolivian, you know what I mean? Um, I don't have nowhere to go or nothing to do, you know what I mean? I just go fly my pigeons on the roof in New York. Sometimes I have to be really at my lowest level to really get the purest out of me. I'm just um, trying to get back into loving it again. I was just um, fighting for, I don't know what I was doing. My mind's been other places for a long time. I had no chance to love anybody or care about anybody because I was just so stuck in the past. Past is a glorious moment. Isn't it? The past. Why can I have what I want? Why can I worked hard for it? I sweated for it. I didn't steal it. I bled in the gym for it. I beat my body up and I allowed people to beat me up. Why shouldn't I have it all? Nobody should take nothing from me. He's earned more prize money than any athlete in the history of sports, and he still works out in a public gym. In Mike's world, things are never as they seem. Never. Vegas is his last remaining palace. Just like Mike, it is unfulfilled promise, suffering from neglect. People should try being me, you know what I mean? The world I've come from, I've been abused um, and used. Um, Any way a person could be abused and used. I don't want to look like some enraged animal and stuff. I want to hang out and love life. But I'm not going to tolerate nobody pushing me around like I'm a chump. After the next Lewis fight, he, he was just, I don't know, totally different. He was more humble. He's just a regular person like everyone else, that he's not this animal, you know, that people think he is. He's just a beautiful person with a big heart, very giving and sensitive and emotional. But I know his past and, you know, is there. You can't just overlook it. I'm here to show him that there's people he can trust, because it's very hard for him to trust people. You know, he's been burnt a lot. And people used to look at him as an easy target. They were like, you know, he's someone that 
he has so much money, he's always throwing it around. I might as well get a piece of it. You know, that's how people looked at it. He's got a lot of love to give, and people don't know that. So I know that I'm that person. I I'm here to make him happy. I'm glad the fact she said she's in love. Then again, you know, all this stuff, all these goodies and stuff, it's easy to love this stuff. You know what I mean? Let us see a couple of my episodes, a couple of more of my episodes, and we'll find out. What does a man do to himself when he gets ready to fight another man? Tuning the body is one thing, but getting your mind there is something else. And then you gotta go back. It doesn't matter that you're fighting some guy named Clifford Etienne, a guy you're expected to destroy. You're headed back to Memphis, back to a place of bad memories. Mike Tyson returning to the scene of his worst performance. And when the week began, we weren't even sure there would be a fight. Tyson needs to win big and make a powerful statement. Tyson risks cuts and infection by getting a tattoo on his face only 11 days before the bout. Billions of people outside with tattoos on their face. I got a tattoo and I'm not finished. I had to stop because people were complaining. So when I get finished, then you talk about my tattoo. And this is nothing. This is not even halfway done. Did speak to Shelly Finkel, Mike Tyson's manager. He did tell me that Mike spent most of the day today in seclusion, very focused, much, much different than when he was here in June against Lennox Lewis. In fact, he said, I wished he'd have had this attitude and this focus going into that fight. So you want to talk to me? What do you want to do with me? You watch my eating techniques there. Kid. I gorge the chicken. I eat like a barracuda. I have no... Thank you very kindly. I have no etiquette skills whatsoever. I hate Mike Tyson. So I don't like Mike Tyson. So I mostly wish to work for Mike Tyson. So I don't get caught up with Mike Tyson. That's probably why I don't like my friends and my fans. I'm a pretty decent individual, but I, I sometimes I go to the deep end. Sometimes I get on the dark side. I just think I come across too hard, too tough. So people think they see how up I am for all these years, and nobody even consider helping. And even if I'm embarrassed to accept it, can't they? If I'm friendly, can't they please get somebody to help? Can't they get them put me in a sane asylum or a mental ward or whatever place I need to be in a, a hospital or just? A psychiatrist. I'm not. I'm just going to extremes. What to do? But I don't know. But you know, everybody. I don't see them for weeks. Girls, I can't ever get to get their number. They call me always the day to fight, the week before the fight. It kills me. I mean, I'm never gonna see these girls because if I don't them the day before the fight or something like that, I'm never gonna see them again. So I just really don't. Maybe in my next life. I have a better life, and that's why I'm just looking forward to go to the other world. Because I really hate the way I live now, and I hate my life now. You don't practice over the names and the means. I'm working at another time. None of my friends have any respect for me. Love is respect, I think. I think love is respect. Now, most of these people love me. I got some money. And, you know, of course, it's easy to love people that live like me. Got $10 million houses, mansions. It's so easy to love a person like that. They haven't seen me when I'm homicidal, suicidal, just totally off the rock. Go ahead, Joe. Go ahead. The more my bank account grows, the more feelings I lose. <laughs> the more intimacy I lose, the more respect I lose for women. Good luck, I probably cheated on every woman I ever been with. Good luck, good luck. Good luck to you, Mike. Probably next, never respect them because I probably never respect myself. I never understood dignity. He spoke to me. He spoke to me. I want to, but I just don't have love for anybody. I don't love any woman I ever been with. Isn't that crazy? Never love them. Memphis. 22nd. After the big fight, it's going on. It's the biggest after party, the biggest club, Denim and Diamond. And do you know what time it is? Danger! What time is it?
making his way to the ring, the most exciting fighter of his generation. Please welcome Iron Mike Tyson. That night, Mike Tyson was reborn as a fighter. At least it seemed that way. I've been doing this for probably 23 to 25 years, and I haven't received any dignity from it. I've received a lot of pain from it. I'd have probably received it just in my average everyday life if I didn't fight. But it's just, it made me not like Mike Tyson no more. So um, when your guys show me love, I hate you, because I don't like myself. So. Um, we got a little, um, I got to catch 22 with my own identity, you know what I mean? That's how come I, I'm very harsh with you sometimes, because I'm very tyrannical, because I'm not happy with myself. I don't care if I live and die. I don't give a about any of y'all, but I do. Hi, Gina. You saw Daddy fight? Yeah, yeah, happy back. Were well, you happy? Yeah. All right, we're going to try to keep him like that short and get him out of there, right? Yeah, Okay, I'm letting my baby go back to sleep. I just wanted to tell her I love her and I want to tell her the knuckleheads I said hi. Well, I tried to wake her up, but they were out. Yeah, I know them. All, they ain't going nowhere. Good job. Thank you. I really have nothing to lose in my life. I have nothing. I lost my soul as a human being. I lost my self-respect. I'm not a lovable guy, so it's really not hard for people to dislike me. I'm just a decent person. I just want to love everybody, but first you have to love me too. A lot of times I just hate myself. Sometimes I think about some of the things I've done to people and some of the ways I hurt people. Sometimes the journey home shows you where that hate and that hurt comes from. We were just poor black kids, just that no one cared about. So we didn't care about anyone either. I was just a monster as a kid. The beast survived, you know, the toughest survived, the meanest. You have to be willing to do what no one else would do. Mean, ferocious, bloodthirsty. You just have to be the man. My sister and brother, they used to keep the on me all the time. And I just didn't want to fight. My brother was always a genius. Everybody in the block loved him. And what did they say about you? I was a good piece of <laughs> I was a piece of started breaking the houses in Brooklyn. I like the armed robberies. You have to go where the money's at. You have to go in the stores and houses and stuff. I was more um, inclined to that kind of stuff when I was a child. My mother, my brother, my sister would never steal. They would prefer to beg. They embarrassed me a lot because they were too, they were too honest. A lot of real um, horrific beating. I was very afraid all the time. My mother may throw hot scalding water on her boyfriend. Her boyfriend may beat her and fracture her eye socket or something, or break her finger. Emotions was high, and they're hating one another, then they're back at loving one another. And you're talking about dysfunctionality at its highest level. 
the strongest woman figure in our life is our mother. And more normally, most young black in the city kids see that figure destroyed by a black man. So I ultimately hold some kind of hatred for our mother's boyfriend, the black man in general. By age 13, he was locked up, but the abuse didn't stop in jail. I wasn't really um, abused by the kids, mostly by the staff members. They beat the out of me. I think I deserved, you know, I mean, at least 95% of the beatings. And I used to always fought back. I wasn't always successful, but I always fought back. Tyson was sent to a detention center 100 miles from Brooklyn, not far from a town called Catskill, where an old boxing legend toiled in obscurity in a gym above a local police station. I go, that's it. That's it. No, I do it the other way. Customato had turned around street kids before. He had trained the youngest heavyweight champion ever, Floyd Patterson. We get a phone call from this Bobby Stewart, who was an amateur fighter, and he was a guard in a correctional facility. He called Cus one day and said, you know, I got this young kid up here who never boxed or nothing, doesn't know anything, but he gets in trouble. I was wondering if you and Teddy would take a look. I met this white guy, he was strange, a little odd, and he started saying things like, why, wow, you could be the greatest fighter ever live, and you're great. I'm thinking he's like some old pervert guy. I'm talking, okay, cool. I knew Cus was thinking, wow, I got somebody to, to have, be young about again, to have some hope. But Cus didn't want to wait. He was an older man who years earlier had fame, but didn't have it for a long time, had money, but didn't have it for a long time. And now he saw a chance to have it again, but he wasn't young, and he had to speed it up. When he came, actually, I talked to him and treated him like everybody else. He had to go through the same thing of preparing about the mind and the body and so forth and so on. He has basically destroyed me of all my habits and, yes, um, reformed me. Remember, from the side, you can let that punch go with the worst kind of intention. He's my first exposure to a white guy who didn't judge me. With all the power you can generate. I was madly in love with Custom Motto. I became, um, he broke me down and rebuilt me back up, and um, I became totally loyal to him. I became his slave. I was a young kid at the time. I just wanted to love him forever. I wanted to be my father. champ of the world someday. Just keep your mind where it's supposed to be. Each week I teach him something new. First week I teach him how to slip punch. Second week I teach him how to weave hooks. Each time he come back, you could see he learned real fast because he was interested. Straight over, it's nice and straight. Cuz had it in his mind to make sure he concentrated on the most evident thing, that he could punch and he was gonna be a knockout artist. He had this outer body that could really fool you so stretch him out. into forgetting that he was still a kid who had to develop. Developed as he was physically, he was lacking emotionally. Look, 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 just relax, Michael, relax, just relax. Relax, just relax. 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 We've been loud, Yeah, but just relax. Just relax. I'm only first time. Yeah, well, just relax. Hold this for tense. Relax. All of this is another park for lunch. We've done it already 20 times. We've done it in the gym. With better fighters than you're ever going to fight here. He's unsure of himself. He wants to be reaffirmed that this is worthwhile, that he is worthwhile, that he has merit, that he can handle this. Yeah. 
Yeah. Well, yeah, I'm like Tyson. Anybody likes me. Sure, I will like you now. That's right. You have a reason to be proud. I, I feel an affection for him. That, that I want him to be okay. I want him to not just win physically, but win emotionally. I want him to, to, to be able to get through this. Let's go get ready for a fight. Come on. I was just 15. I was this, this, for this big time event. I'm emotionally frayed. I'm a street kid. I'm used to pulling out my gun and people, and I'm getting ready to fight a guy head up with rules now. He might beat my ass. <laughs> this white boy might beat the out of me because it's a popular. You don't know your shit. It doesn't matter about you being big, strong, and not you fighting a skinny white boy. This is a disciplined sport. <laughs> Eight second knockout, the first round. Eight second knockout, the right hand. The official came over to him and said, you just, you just set a record. Fastest knockout ever. To the outside world, it seemed like boxing's version of a fairy tale. But again, in Mike's world, things are never as they sing. Tyson started having problems in school uh, with kids and with teachers and getting in trouble. It was uh, over 100 reports of girls uh, in one way or another being uh, not treated right, being abused. That stuff was kept quiet because Cuz had some meetings with uh, people in the school and convinced them that Tyson was going to make the town famous. Eventually, he was permanently expelled from school. Cuz told him that, hey, if they kick you out, don't worry about it. I'll get you a tutor. And the problem was he didn't get him a tutor. He didn't get his GED because they didn't care about it. You know, I mean, he was knocking guys out. Feeling real white and happy. <laughs> it was ironic because um, my mother was sick. But, um, I almost forgot about my mother because I was living a upper middle class life. I'm in my white world. And then the cuss tells me about my mother's situation with the camper, and I don't understand it. And um, so I go down, I go to the hospital, and I see my mother. I had no idea. Uh, I've seen movies. I've never saw anyone sick with cancer. So I expect to see, well, you know, I love you, but I'm a corner now, Johnny. I, you know, I'm used to seeing movies. I'm actually to go in there and witness my mother um, stricken with this illness. It was over. Well, man, oh, man, the, the sunken eyes, the, the skeleton-like head with the skin tightly around the... The, the cranium, it was, um, whoa, man, it was mind-boggling. So, I um, mean, she was briefly naked. You could see her breath, and I was just, I didn't understand. I just didn't understand that, um, the whole scenario there was, I covered up, I kissed her, I never returned, but I, I kept telling my sister, um, I'm, oh, hey, I'm going there every day. I've been going every day, but I, I was out getting high and drinking every night because that knocked, ooh, that took me for, man, I, Smoked angel. That's I really did. Man, cocaine. I mean, I must. Um, I must have been 15. I blew my mind. Um, so one day, um, my sister came home, and um, I guess I was. I was slept because I was hungover and everything. So I was slept, and I was in my underwear, and I was walking. Um, I guess to open the door for her. And as soon as I open the door, she punches me right in my face. Wow! And she said, "Why didn't you tell me mommy was dead?" And um, I didn't want to get killed right there, so I said, I didn't want to hurt you. I couldn't tell you. I went there, but I never went. And, um, ooh, I don't know. Um, I couldn't even go down and witness the body, but uh, my cousin Eric went with her. Um, it was wild. I ain't never want to do that, that poor. I'm not into that. Mm -mm. <clears throat> so, um, that was just, uh, that was interesting. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> that was just interesting in my life. That was it's a turning point. That um that was what happened. That poor man that um I was gonna be famous and rich. You ever seen a grinder? You know the grinder that you take a wood and you put it in and it comes out the other hand and shreds? That's my heart. <sighs> it's grounded beef. I don't strike people as a guy that somebody wants to take care of. Oh, he's weak. Oh, he's all oh, we can help him. He's the underdog. I've never been looked at like that. I'm a big black nigga. And he's, he's um, semi-beast, so um, be careful. He doesn't need help. He needs to be locked up. When my mother died, that's just really overwhelming. I didn't care. I lived in this play world, and it was overwhelming me. It was really crushing me at the time. In the fall of 1982, Customato became Tyson's legal guardian. Cus's companion, Camille Ewall, became his surrogate mother. Cus was saying, you're not in jail no more. You have a chance to make yourself something productive here. But in the same breath, it was still showing him you were still going to get away with things that someone else couldn't get away with. You were still going to break the rules because you could punch him, because now you, you had the ability to be a world champion fighter. And Cus was playing a dangerous game, I thought. Teddy had married a young lady. We were all kids then, and he had a sister-in-law that was a young girl, and we were all friends, and I guess I was a young boy, and I was fresh, and I grabbed her butt. She was 11 years old, and uh, she was part of my family, my wife's family, and he, uh, he, he kind of uh, cornered her into a situation outside the gym in the town. And this wouldn't be tolerated. I went and found him. And I put a gun to his head and pulled the trigger back and told him that he would never put his hands on anyone in my family or do anything like that to anyone in my family again, or he'd be dead. Just to make sure he understood, I stuck the gun in his ear and then pulled it out of his ear and shot it off. He crumbled away, and I told him, don't make the mistake again. Understand that you're not ever going to violate anyone in my family, ever, ever. Teddy Atlas never saw Mike Tyson or Custom Motto again. Kevin Rooney took over as Tyson's trainer. If you can hit me, I'm going to get the phone back. Keep the head down when you come up with the age. Keep your head down. Yeah, I mean, it's not coming up, but it's starting to come up. You make it perfect. It's good, but it's not perfect. In March of 85, at the age of 18, Tyson turned pro. The first round knockout became his trademark. And the TV commentators began equating him with animals. Already, Mike Tyson. time fighters he saw in the movies. Have a 
goal that me, Cus, Jim Jacobs, and my trainer, Kevin Rooney, all planned. And God forbid, if anything happened to Cus, we're all professionals, and we're going to continue. And the outcome is going to be the same. I often say to him, you know, I owe you a lot. He doesn't know what I mean, but I'm going to tell him now what I mean. Because if he weren't here, I probably wouldn't be alive today. The fact that he is here and doing what he's doing and doing as well as, in, as he's doing and improving as he has gives me the motivation and interest to stay alive. And I will stay alive and I will watch him become a success because I will not leave until that happens. He was a cold old man that had been through a lot. I wish he lived long enough. I just wish he lived long enough. Customata was 77 when he died in 1985. He was the only father Mike had ever known. Now what do you do? Who do you trust? You're an alien in your own world. Enter Jim Jacobs, Cus's confidant and financial backer. Jacobs had paid for Tyson's bills all along, but now he had to lend his emotions. Tyson embraced him as his protector. Days after Cus died, Tyson was back in the ring. And the knockouts continued. After 27 pro fights, Mike Tyson would get his title shot. A day with destiny at the age of 20. I'm born to destroy. I'm born to be champion. No, I was just some big gorilla knocking everybody out. Didn't stand for anything. Didn't really care about anything. Just want to fight everybody. The good people, the bad people. Just everybody just hate you all. You know, it's just f you. Catskill, New York, with 27 wins, no defeats, 25 KOs. He is the challenger, Mike Tyson. Enter Don King, Burbick's promoter. He stepped over the body of his beaten champ and began his courtship of Mike Tyson. Six months later, he gave him a coronation. King of the corners of the four square wing, you have won the ultimate championship of the world. 
you are hereby proclaimed throughout the world as the undisputed heavyweight champion. One man, one crown, one champion. Stand firm and hold fast. I don't have to talk, do I? Because I don't really, I don't know what to say. to think that you're trying to somehow save somebody, but you're kind of drowning. You know what I mean? You kind of jump in the pool to save them, and you're kind of going under. I wanted to take care of him. He made me want to protect him and have everything be okay for him, and he made me want to right every wrong ever done to him. I held him a lot, and he'd cry a lot. Michael's a person you could just fall in love with. You know, there's really something about him where you're like gaga over him. What the S. Scott Fitzgerald say, show me a hero and I'll write you a tragedy. What, they build us up just to break us down? The breed, beauty and the beast, they had a great story, but the beauty couldn't, change, couldn't train the beast. And he ate her. That's man, come on, that's real white to make you look like, um, a evil black monster. You raise a pit bull, then you get mad because it eats the furniture. Fame. It's a cold game. In Mike's world, it wasn't a good thing. He was controversial enough in the ring. I just wanted to hurt those guys and say nasty things and humiliate them. This is who I wanted to be. What broke him down? Was it just the pressure? body punches. But I was, I was hitting him with body punches, and I heard him actually he was crying in there, making woman gestures like, oh, oh, oh. I can't. How kind of, I knew that he was breaking down to him. There's not a man God ever created that could beat me. I just love hearing those words. And he's saying that, he's just great, he's being a little kid saying that, but and actually meaning it. <laughs> being 19, a little kid saying that to all the grown men. <laughs> Come on, you want to try me? I'm the best fighter that God ever created or produced. Who want to stand, who want to stand and try a chance with me? But back then, I did come outside for real, a street fight. I was a maniac. <laughs> so. I think there's a reason the world loves him so. There's such a lovable side to him. It's really so soft and gentle and, you know, sort of like a bear. The winner, and still the undisputed, undefeated heavyweight champion of the world, Iron Mike Tyson! I remember him grabbing me and saying, you're going to be my woman, and I'm going to love you like no one's loved you, you know, that kind of thing. I was just young, she was young, we were crazy at the time. Two crazy people in love, you know, too much um, passion sometimes. When they met, Mike was 21 and Robin was 22. watch Phil Donahue when I, you know, I grew up on Phil Donahue, you know? And you watch those shows and you think of women that have been hit. You go, oh my God, that would never happen to me. What's wrong with this woman? I remember the impact. I remember the turn and the hook. He hit me in the side of the head. And I went from one corner of the wall, bounced off that corner of the wall to another corner, and then I was out. I didn't.
didn't think he would do that. I was shocked. I went from being completely numb to completely embarrassed. I remember thinking, wow, he must really love me. <laughs> I remember feeling that. Not thinking it, feeling it. A few weeks after that episode, Mike and Robin were married. Their life became an open book. Fantastic! Their honeymoon played out before the world press in Tokyo, where Mike and Robin were treated like royalty. <laughs> that Tony Tubbs fight. Tubbs is hurt. Tubbs is hurt badly. It was a left hook. The fight is over. With stunning swiftness. Greed reaches at the deepest core of people. It reaches deep at them. And they're fighting for me and stuff and all that crap. And then that made it easy for Don King to sneak in. And he used, um, he got me good. He was pretty good. A very interesting individual. Not only am I hurt, um, I become the bad guy now. I'm just young and I'm emotional, and people are putting cameras in my face, looking at me like this is a big, strong guy, the strongest guy in the world going berserk. I'm just a baby, 20, 21 years old. I think he was feeling probably unbelievable amounts of pressure. And I think being in love makes you feel vulnerable. We were both feeling vulnerable, I think, you know, because we were so dependent in many respects. And I think we just couldn't handle the pressure that we were getting. One time it had gotten pretty bad and he swung a phone at me that I knew was gonna hit my face and really, I was, I think I felt the pain before, you know, I didn't know. They're just choking me, he vomiting and him kicking me, things like that. But he felt bad. I mean, he felt really bad afterwards. You know, he'd cry like a baby. Next, I mean, like a baby, just cry. I would hold him. I'd hold ice on my face and hold him. You know, and tell him I'm. I'm cons I would console him. And you would think this is a grown man that has all of his um, emotional capabilities and um, and together and intact, and it's just not true. It was some kind of love. I mean, the kind you doesn't go away. That kind. to that world, you know what I mean? I wanted that forbidden fruit that everyone else had. But those ordeals, and you say, whoa. I, sometimes, it's so ironic, sometimes I think about things that when I was 20 and 21, and I used to get so nervous, I was oh, God. What was on my mind? What was I thinking when I was doing that? I want to accomplish greatness. I want to, you know, that's what me and Cus planned to do when we first started. You know, I want to get some closure myself and get some kind of greatness. I popped on the scene and made it, and uh, the real I became to myself, the more phony everything else was around me. And I'm a great manipulator. You have to understand, in order to be the... The, the greatest fighter in the world, you have to be the greatest liar in the world. 
deep down inside, I think I'm, um, I guess an actor, entertainer, crying out. You know, I'm doing it in the ring. Ah! I don't know what the hell I am. I'm a nut. Out of the ring, New York became the focus of an investigation of Tyson's finances by his wife and mother-in-law. The newlyweds tried to buy a house and found out they had almost nothing in the bank. Robin and her mother were cast as gold diggers, and the press frenzy began. Is Tyson's business manager, Bill Caton, trying to break the bond of matrimony in order to strengthen his bond with the multi-million dollar fighter? In many respects, Bill tried to throw up smoke screens for what the real issue was. Robin Givens demanded an accounting of her new husband's worth. The Sphinx fight was supposed to be Mike Tyson's crowning achievement, the richest fight in history, nearly overshadowed by tabloid journalism. Robin miscarried their first child just two weeks before the fight. Mike was devastated. Robin was accused of lying about the pregnancy. But the show went on. At least it did for 91 seconds. that in the afterglow of his greatest victory, Tyson focused less on the fight and more on the press. I wasn't really appreciative of what you guys, quote the reporters, did to me. Um, building up to this fight, you, tr you tried to embarrass me, you tried to embarrass my family, you tried to disgrace us. And as far as I know, this might be my last fight. Mike would say goodbye to the Catskill connection. Goodbye to the gym where he was born as a fighter. Goodbye to the men who had shaped and molded him. Goodbye to Kevin Rooney, his trainer. He had climbed the mountains and fulfilled Cuss's dream. But the man wasn't satisfied with what he had found. Sometimes the game piss you off and you don't want to play. I'm a real, um, a weird guy. Once I accomplish something, I lose interest in it. And I just need, um, that's my whole outlet in life. I need something to do. <laughs> I need something to do. I don't care how much money I got, I need something to do. It just started getting dangerous. So when I say I'm happy that everybody's alive in my family, like, it got dangerous. Basically, like the doctor said, if he wasn't going to take his medicine, then you're the one that should be coming to see me. So now they got to basically say I'm crazy and mentally disturbed. I saw a bunch of psychiatrists. It made me more up than I was when I first went in there. As the battle over Mike Tyson's mental health continues, the latest round goes to the champ, according to the psychiatrist who examined Tyson this week. Mike Tyson's problem or disturbance does not rise to the level of a serious mental illness called manic depressive illness. He loves women. Yeah, that was a problem. That was a problem for us, too. <laughs> The loving women part. <laughs> I remember Michael picking him up one time and actually he had on a white sweatsuit and he had lipstick stains on his crotch. <laughs> I was a pig. I've never been um, faithful to any woman I've ever met in my life and um, it wasn't easy for Robin to live with me either. You know what I mean? I'm a dirty dog down deep. <laughs> I found a condom. That was a terrible feeling. Well, I just wanted to live um, a reckless life. I just didn't think no one could be champion 
better than I could be. I could beat any bastard in the planet. He hit me. But Tyson said Green ripped his shirt after hassling him about not getting fully paid for their garden bath. So what I suffer. So what I suffer. Tyson's car skidded off a wet road and slammed into a tree, knocking the fighter unconscious. He was taken to a local hospital and then transferred to one in New York City. Uh, you okay? All you the okay? while, his wife okay, tried to keep the media away. Give us a break! Give us a break! Give us a break! Give us a break! I mean, he ran the car into the tree. I mean, it wasn't an accident. But do I think he wanted to kill himself? No. But he did run the car into the tree. Tyson left the hospital Wednesday, apparently after seeing a psychiatrist. Then he got on an airplane and flew off to Moscow, where his wife will be taping some TV shows. In Russia, I would say, I thought somebody was going to die. Me or him. Well, I forget what floor we were on, but he was hanging over the balcony with his fingertips, saying he wants to make a comeback. I said, you can't come, come back, you're number one, <laughs> you know. I don't know how I got him in the room. I think he passed out. I think he'd been drinking and he passed out. And we flew back. And then the next day I did Barbara Walters. Michael is a manic depressive. He is. I mean, that's just a fact. It's been worse than anything I could possibly imagine. It's been pure hell. I've become afraid. He gets out of I was overwhelmed. Throwing I was just trying to keep my cool. You know, I always, uh, I was just, uh, why would they do that to someone like that? Why would they do it to any human being? I definitely regretted it. I mean, if I could take it back, I definitely would. Like I said, I think I thought I was doing a brave thing, and it was just very poor judgment on my part. Police were called to Tyson's Bernardsville mansion by Robin Gibbons, who said that Tyson had gone on a rampage. We were in the washroom area, sort of hiding, and he calmed down, and he said, Robin, come here. And I didn't go. I didn't go. I didn't, that was the first time I didn't. There's two young kids that wasn't supposed to be married in the first place, and yes, everybody in the world in your business make you feel like you're in a freak show, and you, you play into it sometimes, just, you know, it's just crazy, you know, it's just crazy. Robin, Robin Gibbons fled to California from her husband, the heavyweight champion Mike Tyson, and today Marvin Mitchelson filed for a Gibbons divorce from Tyson. <laughs> Two days after Robin left Mike, he was baptized in Don King's church by Don King's minister under Don King's rules. He told me all those white were no good they ain't. They out to kill us all, they're gonna put us in the Holocaust and fry us like they do the Jews. We gotta fight these. Oh, he told me some good. <laughs> oh, I love that. Oh, yeah, we got to get them they're going to fry us. <laughs> and I started believing that they hate us, you know, and I played into that stuff. in the state of hysterica. It was just awful. It was just awful. And I got manipulated into that situation. And um, I don't know, I was just very much unha unhappy um, from then on. And when I'm pretty much unhappy, I'm just very self-destructive. 
Mike knew he was headed for a fall, but the rest of the world had no idea. Tyson versus Buster Douglas looked like a joke on paper. The line was 42 to 1. With matching coats, Mike and Don King arrived with all the smugness everyone expected. He'd get millions for knocking out another chunk. Come one, come all, because nobody can get close to me. They're not even close. I'm the best fighter in the world. The better man God ever created that can beat me. There's nobody that can beat me. There's nobody that can beat me. Nobody's invincible. Nobody's the greatest fighter in the world. is hurt. He got a little overconfident. Tyson is holding on. There's a right hand uppercut and down goes Douglas. As suddenly as that. Tyson needed something like that desperately. Douglas comes back with a left and a right. Tyson is wobbling. Tyson needs the ropes. Without the ropes, Mike would have gone down. Sometimes the guy just breaks your will in a way. You just say, F it. Buster killed me. Hell yeah, Buster killed me, kicked my butt. I don't know, I didn't train for that fight. I didn't really take that fight serious. I was, um, I was, oh, I was, those, um, Japanese girls, like it was, um, like it was eating grapes. You thought I was Caesar. You thought I was Caligula when I was out there with, in Japan, you know? They say um, these things are blessing in disguise. You know what I mean? I just believe it was just a temporary setback. You know what I mean? I'm, I'm, good. I'm still the best fighter in the world. situation at the time but I'll be okay Buster Douglas for the great fight and I'll be champion again within six months Mike Tyson wouldn't be champion again for six years no fighter would stop him his lust for women would Said, try that again, and I'll smack the blank out of you. It's like, whoa, whoa, we have a live one here. He has to be taught a lesson that he can't treat women any way he wants to. He just came at me. The next thing I know, I'm on the ground. Mike Tyson's sister died, Denise Anderson. She was only 24 years old, but she was very obese. She weighed more than 300 pounds. She died of a heart attack at home in Queens. Mike Tyson is back. My name is Desiree. My ideal me is athletic. Hi, I'm Mike Tyson. Be sh sure to watch the Miss Black America pageant on this channel. And we will have fun with these pretty black girls. God. I'm in a dream day after day. Mm. Beautiful women, such an array. What can I say? Mm -mm -mm. An Indiana grand jury has indicted former heavyweight boxing champ Mike Tyson. He is charged with raping a woman who was a contestant in this summer's Miss Black America pageant. 
Mike's defense fell to Don King's tax attorney, Vince Fuller. Fuller had never tried a case like this before, but King was confident until the end. We're very thankful for the verdict of guilty, uh, but I don't think we should lose sight of the fact that this is really, a, in some ways, a tragic moment because uh, two young people's lives have been dramatically affected. Desiree Washington knows what happened in the room. I know what happened, and I know I'm innocent. I never learned to play the game. I just was um, angry at myself and angry at everybody. The judicial system hates me. It just hates me. For what reason? I don't know. What the f did I do? Why would you give me three years? If the, the sentence was 63 and you gave me three, you knew in your heart I didn't rape anybody. You know what I mean? I'm a nigger. I'm in a bunch of I've been convicted for raping somebody. I've been charged for raping somebody, but I got away with it, so to speak, because I'm a celebrity. I beat some guys up. I brutalized some people. I've been to jail. I've been in all type of You know, really, that's telling you. I'm a, I'm, I can't vote. I'm a, I'm, a, I'm a felon. I'm paying millions and millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars out of my ass for taxes, and um, I have no rights. And you're such a, I don't got a chance in this society. pretty much of an animal out of me. I'm in here for something I didn't do, and I'm innocent. It's every day I'm, I'm walking a thin line through hell. People come out of prison, they come out, of, they come out in worse condition than it was when they first entered. Jail don't rehabilitate anybody. The only thing you're doing there is just um, multiply hate and hate and hate. Hate, you fall in love with hate in prison. After three years in prison, he again fell in love with Don King, signing a deal worth over $100 million just days before his release. He emerged just after 6 a.m. to the glare of hundreds of cameras, but the world would see and hear little of Mike Tyson as he shed the title of inmate number 922-335. Now I'm back in society, and no one cares either. They don't know that that um, that um, spending in jail had an effect on me. Where I didn't want to come out of jail, I felt very comfortable there. I was afraid to come home when I left in the end. I didn't want to leave. I was trying to go back, you know, um, but they wouldn't take me back. I'm scarred forever. After years of financial abuse by King and his company, Mike still stayed on the same road. King's chartered jet was there to take Mike to his new home with Don in Ohio. In prison, Mike had converted to Islam, but his religion remained Don King. It was crazy. It was just crazy. 
everything was just too fast, wasn't real to me. You know what I mean? I was just, uh, I was just in a real horrible place, and I just came out, and everybody just made like I was, oh, we love you, Mike. They had no ideas, um, some of the bad habits that um, I picked up, and they loved me. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> They told me a lot of dreams. I didn't know what I was gonna do when I got out. I just didn't know where I trust these guys and I believe um, they have my best interests. But I didn't understand what was going on, man. Really, I didn't. Afternoon. In the last three years, I had had the chance to reflect on my life and develop my mind. And I will continue my journey to making myself a better person. I came out with more vengeance than anything. I used to be more evil and vengeance, you know? There's been a lot of speculation about my plan, and here they are. I will fight again. I signed contracts with these people for large sums of money. They didn't want to hear nothing. They didn't want to hear you need some time to get your mind together and your life together. You need this money. You have to pay back this money. There's no question that when Mike was in prison, uh, he was effectively bankrupt. Mike's future was uh, well planned out uh, by Don King prior to him getting out of prison. He gave trust to him in many, many, many areas. And Don managed to ensure that Mike had no lawyers, no financial advisors, and no accountants. I was walking him through some of the legal documents, uh, just one of which managed to take $43.5 million out of Mike's pocket and put it into Don's pocket. Cuss once told me, I never forgot that. He said, hey, there's animals disguised as human beings out here. You're not sophisticated enough to decipher the two. In April of 95, Tyson moved his base of operations to Las Vegas. His fights had moved from the Mirage to the MGM Grand. Don King had designed a program to get the title back for Mike. He just needed to keep his client happy. Like helping Mike buy white tigers as pets. His house was next to Wayne Newton. By early 96, Monica Turner, his girlfriend from prison days, would have their first child. There were often times where I felt that you know, outside people who kind of manipulated what should have been a personal relationship for their own interests. And a lot of the times what was best for Mike or best for his family got lost. The one, the only, the legendary Mike Tyson. The MGM Grand Deal was unique in boxing history. It was a 10-fight guarantee which could pay Tyson upwards of $150 million if all went right. It started out okay. First, it was McNeely. Then Mathis. Then Bruno and Selden all felt like they were supposed to. But Evander Holyfield didn't follow the script. I was angry and I was very frustrated. I lost him the first time. I didn't even know how he beat me. The second fight, I realized he was headbutting me, and I realized that's how I felt the first time the dizziness. So I started feeling the same blackout type of feeling. I was angry and I reached out in very um, stupidic rage.
but I really um, regret doing that. But wow, you know, um, I was going through a lot. I had a lot on my mind, and I was fighting a lot of demons. Saturday night was um, the worst night of my professional career as a boxer. Mike Tyson is temporarily suspended. I move that Michael Gerard Tyson's boxing license be revoked and pay administrative fine in the amount of $3 million. White society thinks I'm an animal, a wild beast out of control, ready to rape their daughters or hurt them or, or do something drastic to them. I'm just the biggest prick as they are. You know, I'm whatever they want to be. I could be a kind, regal cat, and I can be a raving, stalk, mad maniac. I've been, I've been a lot of things. I've been many of things and many of people. You know what I mean? Get off my hand. He was out seeing let him catch the first stone. Don, did you ever steal from him? <laughs> In the wake of Holyfield 2, Tyson would sue Don King for $100 million, alleging King stole from him for years. I'm just trying to get out this debt, man. The Don King got me involved with, but I'm just trying to get out this debt, man. He should have known he couldn't fight against me. Ali made him, I subtained him, and now I'm a break him. Did you ever steal from Mike Tyson? Never. Never steal from anyone. It's painful because I love the guy. You know what I mean? I really, we both are urchins of the ghetto. When we came to the crossroads, I took left, he took right. If Tyson was to get out of the debt, he would have to get his boxing license back. But the specter of the ear bite would haunt him. How many times does one individual have to be asked are you sorry for what you did? This, you know, you know what I mean, man. Oh, Mike, no. Mike, just you relax. I gotta be on my. You know, Mike, you you relax. Relax. Ruined my life internally. Ruined my life. And um, do you think I want to do it again? Stand tall, stand proud. Boxer Mike Tyson pleaded no contest Tuesday to misdemeanor assault. He was accused of kicking and punching two motorists after a traffic accident last August. Mike's never been a threat to the community. Mike's a very sweet, very sensitive, very giving person. You guys have all been told lies by people profiting at Mike's expense. Boxer Mike Tyson could be back in the ring before the year is out. On Monday, in a 4-1 to one split decision, the Nevada Athletic Commission gave Tyson his license back. An emotional Mike Tyson winning another round in his beleaguered boxing career. I was f***ed up, man. You have to admit, man. I was... God, man. You yeah, so have no idea. You guys have no idea. Fighting Mr. Holyfield's ear off and all that stuff. You know what I mean? You don't care about that? No, f*** Holyfield. His anger and his debt grew. Now the IRS wanted $13 million. Don King's sweet talk had left him totally unprotected. Man, you don't understand the these niggas did. They made my wife, like I left my because they had my wife think I'm a punk ass. They made me look like a bitch ass nigga, humiliated me. So really I left because I wasn't even a man in my household no more. That's really the real reason I left. They made me want to kill them, you know? So I line them up by uh, St. Valentine's Day action. Mike Tyson now entered uncharted territory. While he hired Shelly Finkel as an advisor, he was spinning out of control between depression, anger, and rage. How about the 19 months off? Does, what does about that, it? Does it? What about it? Does it pose any problem to you? We'll see. I doubt it seriously. You take into the ring a lot of rage. You know, who cares? We're in a fight anyway. What, what, the, what, what does it matter? Well, for example, rage against uh, Vander Holyfield worked against you. Well, f 
it. It's a fight. So whatever happens, happens. Mike, why do you have to talk like that? Well, I'm talking to you the way I want to talk to you. Do you have a problem? Turn off your station. You know what? I think we'll end the discussion right now. Then we could. You got it. Have a nice fight, Mike. Fuck off. Mike Tyson heads toward the same ring. He made his disgraceful exit in June of 97. I don't know if I'm prepared to fight um, the end of this year or anything. Just a lot of things I've been going through, and I have to be prepared psychologically. Two big misses by Mike Tyson. Another miss with a wild swing. Tyson continues to miss with those wild lefts. Both are off to a tremendous start. Mike to die. I'm not afraid to waste my life because when I die, I'm going to paradise. And I'm not worried, so I'm in a hurry to die. But no one's going to disrespect me and no one's going to write nonsense about me without me retaliating back. Retaliation. Assaulting two guys at a traffic accident would put him back behind bars in the spring of 99. Things go really good for a while, and then they go the opposite way, kind of like a roller coaster. <laughs> but there's just a lot of outside forces that you don't see unless you're in it. That happen every day. Former boxing champion Mike Tyson is a free man this morning. He was released after spending three and a half months in a Maryland jail for assaulting two drivers over a fender bender. The final obstacle to his release was cleared when an Indiana judge ended his probation on a 1992 rape conviction. A spokesman says Tyson will return to the ring. People think they see the, you know, the cars, the glamour and stuff, and they think, oh, I want to be like him, and, but it's not easy. I don't think they would really want to if they knew what it what it entailed. <laughs> and most ruthless champion there's ever been. There's no one can stop me. Lynx is a conqueror. No, I'm Alexander. He's no Alexander. I'm the best ever. There's the never been anybody as ruthless. I'm Sonny Liston. I'm Jack Dempsey. There's no one like me. I'm from their claw. There's no one that can match me. My style is impetuous. My defense is impregnable. And I'm just ferocious. I want your heart. I want to eat his children. Praise be to Allah. All right, Steve. You guys could decipher that. Look, I didn't got this medication, right? It even makes me slur. Like, sometimes I like one day for one second. I'm serious, man. Y'all laughing at me. I'm on this Zoloft thing, right? But I'm on that to keep me from killing y'all. I won't talk nice to you and talk about fornicating with you and letting you suck my d because if I was eloquent with you, you would still look at me as a scumbag. If I wish one of your guys had children so I could kick them in the had a stomp on their testicles for you could feel my pain because that's the pain I have waking up every day.
normally don't do interview with women unless I fornicate with them. So you shouldn't talk anymore. Unless you wanna, you know. There were days and nights that, you know, you're not sure what's gonna happen today or tomorrow. <laughs> I loved him through a lot of ups and a lot of downs, but I couldn't take the hurt anymore. We got along great, other than the whole issue of, um, you know, other women. So I made the decision to, to file for the divorce because I just got to a point where I couldn't do it anymore. People used to bother me a lot, tease them. Yeah. Yeah. As I got older, I started fighting people back. Yeah. Ever since that experience, I don't let people f with me. Put your mother in the straight jacket, you, you punk ass white boy. Come in and tell me that if I f you in your ass, you punk white boy, you faggot. You can't touch me, you're not man enough. I eat your ass alive, you bitch. You, you hoe, come and say in my face, you ask for that, everybody. You got man in the f with me. You can't last two minutes in my world, bitch. Look at you, scared now, you hoe. Scared like a little white Scared of the real man. I'll f you love me, faggot. Nobody really feels for me no more in this world. I guess they wrote me off pretty much. I'm thinking more about what I'm gonna do after box. I'm gonna work, I'm gonna take care of my kids besides the trust funds and all that. Shit, you know what I mean? That's what I think about how I'm gonna take care of their kids, my grandkids now. I'm a real angry and bitter man. It's Mr. Mike, I'm real angry and bitter at some people. Really. Mike Tyson making national news. Mike Tyson is telling his story on Fox tonight. Just when you think Mike Tyson can go no lower, he manages to do just that. Mike Tyson has certainly not lost his touch. Tyson drew attention to himself. His comments were nothing It looks like short. the former world champion Tyson was doesn't have a problem saying what's on his mind. Tyson again denied in an interview with the Box Network to be aired tomorrow. Certainly isn't the first time Tyson has put his foot in his mouth. In fact, Pulse, Tyson again denies he raped former Miss Black America contestant. Yes, Did you do this? Did you rape her? I ain't raped that slimy bitch. Why do you think she said you raped her? Because she's really a bad person. I ain't paid her guts. She put me in that state where I don't know. I really wish I did now, but now I really do want to rape her and her mama. More trouble for former heavyweight champ Mike Tyson. It happened early this morning in downtown Brooklyn. The volatile heavyweight is charged with misdemeanor assault. I'm a nigga. I'm a big, strong nigga that knocks out people and rapes people and rips off people. And, you know what I mean? Bully people. You. Yeah. I'm gonna live my life. I understand this society that I live in hates me. I'm a fuck. I'm a. I'm a spin it. I'm gonna live until they kill me.